Good evening. We're ready to begin. This Planning Commission meeting is called to order. This meeting is improperly noticed and posted in compliance with the open meeting law. These proceedings are being video recorded as well as presented live on KCLV Cable Channel 2. Please note customers of CenturyLink and Cox Communication can view this program in high definition on channel 1002 and in standard definition on channel 2. You can also watch this meeting live on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire TV on the Go Vegas app. The Planning Commission meeting, as well as all other KCLV programming, can be viewed on the internet at www.kclv.tv forward slash live. The proceedings will be rebroadcast on KCLV and the web the Saturday of the meeting at 10 a.m., Monday at midnight, and the following Tuesday at 6 p.m. Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Chair Cherry? Present. Vice Chair DeSalvio? Present. Commissioner Quinn? Here. Commissioner Schlotman is excused. Commissioner Toussaint? Present. Commissioner Flangus is excused. Commissioner Williams? Present. Thank you. Thank you. I call your attention to the information printed in your agenda concerning our actions and the appeal and review process of, if appropriate. Please read this carefully, and if you have questions, staff is available. There's agendas on both sides of the podium here. Uh, on the second page of the agenda contains our rules of conduct. We appreciate you adhering to these rules so we can have a smooth meeting. Item number four is the public comment. All comments made under this item for specific action will be cross-referenced to those items. Are there any members of the public who wish to speak under this portion? Hello, Councilman. Good evening, Mr. Chair, uh, members of the Planning Commission. I uh, just wanted to take a moment uh, to welcome our newest Planning Commissioner for Ward 5, uh, Commissioner Anthony Williams. Uh, I want to thank him for, uh, for him stepping up and answering the call of service once again. Uh, I know that it's not easy to serve, and as you all know, and it takes a commitment and a sacrifice on your personal side and from your family away from them. And so I wanted to thank you on behalf of the citizens of Ward 5 for the hard work that you're about to put in and to welcome you. Uh, you're amongst a good group. You're going to learn a lot and you're going to be fully engaged in our community. So thank you very much, uh, sir. Then I also want to take a quick moment to recognize my friend and to uh, thank her for her years of service. Uh, my, my longtime friend, Commissioner Vicki Quinn, uh, we go way back. I, I told someone we go back, but I didn't tell them how far we go back, and I didn't tell them what going back really means. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> we go we go back, and I know that you have served honorably. Uh, you have served with high level of integrity and intelligence, and I know you always put your community first. When I served with you for two years, and now that I serve as uh, the city councilman next door to Ward 1 in Ward 5, uh, you are a definite asset to our community, and it has been a pleasure to work with you, and I wish you all the best in your future endeavors, because I know this will not be the last thing that you're going to get engaged in. So, thank you. Commissioner, I mean, Councilman, thank you. And I, I also want to recognize the fact that it's such a um, it's such a nice thing the way you come in and welcome your planning commissioners. Oh. It means so much. I don't think I've seen it before, and I honor you for your um, concern, yeah. and I, I love you dearly. Oh, so. Thank you very much. We'll it's, a it's, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a big job. Uh, and I told him about those 4.30 in the morning <laughs> meetings early, so he, remember could, those? he could run now. Yeah, I think, I think those might be on Betamax someplace. <laughs> <laughs> thank God for two meetings. Thank you, guys, and have a fantastic meeting. Thank you, Councilman. And we are excited to have uh, Commissioner Williams as well. We're glad he's here with us on the commission. Uh, moving on to uh, our housekeeping items. I don't believe we have any housekeeping items, do we? No, Mr. Chair. We have no housekeeping items this evening. Okay. So we will move on to the consent items. Consent items are considered routine by the Planning Commission and may be enacted by one motion. However, any item may be discussed if a commission member or applicant so desires. Vice Chair DeSalvio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, at this time, I would like to request that we pull item number six and pull item number eight to be heard. And also, I'd like to make a motion for approval on the consent for item number seven. Thank you, Vice Chair. There's a motion for approval on item number seven of the consent agenda.
please post. And that motion carries. Mr. Chairman, that item is final action this evening unless appealed to the city clerk's office within seven days. Thank you. Moving on to the one motion, one vote. Um, I will be pulling number nine off the one motion, one vote to be heard during the public hearing portion. The following are items that may be considered in one motion, one vote. They are considered routine, non-public, and public hearing items. All public hearings and non-public hearings will be opened at one time. Any person representing an application or a member of the public or a member of the planning commission not agreeing with the conditions and all standard conditions for the application recommended by staff should request to have that item removed from this part of the agenda. I'll read the items in. Item number 10, MOD 76339, Applicant Owner KB Home NV Acquisition LLC. For possible action request for a major modification of the Town Center Land Use Plan from MCTC to UCTC uh, Town, located, Town Center, excuse me, located east of Grand Montecito Parkway at the west side of Dobrook Trail Alignment Ward 6. Staff recommends approval. Related item number 11, VAC 76340, for possible action request for a petition to vacate public right of way, public drainage, public utility, and patent easements located east of Grand Montecito Parkway on the west side of Oso Blanca Road, Ward 6. Staff recommends approval. Item number 12, VAR 76274, applicant owner DR Horton Inc., for possible action and request for a variance to allow a 10 foot front yard setback to the house where 14 is required. At 409 Brev Court, Ward 2, staff recommends approval. That is the. Uh, those are one motion, one vote. So, yes, you'll open up public hearing if anyone wishes to speak, and then one vote. This was noticed as public hearing. Anyone from the public like to be heard on these items? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing portion, turn it over to the vice chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to entertain a motion to approve item 10, 11, and 12, and to pull 9 for public hearing. Thank you. There's a motion on the floor. Please cast your votes. Please post. And that motion carries. Mr. Chairman, items 10 and 11 will move forward to City Council and be heard as a part of their agenda on July 17th, 2019. Item 12 is final action this evening unless appealed to the City Clerk's Office within 10 days. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the public hearing items, we will first hear six and we will open eight at the same time. Number six, TMP 75103, applicant owner of the Howard Hughes Company, LLC, for possible action request for a parent tentative map for a 43 parcel master plan village with deviations of the Summerlin improvement standards at the southwest corner of Lake Mead Boulevard in Clark County 215 Ward 2 staff recommends approval item number 8 TMP 76354 applicant owner the Howard Hughes company LLC for possible action request for a parent tentative map for a 25 parcel master plan village with deviations of the Summerlin improvement standards at the north with northwest corner of Far Hills Avenue and Fox Hill Drive, Ward 2, staff recommends approval. Can we get the staff report, please? Mr. Chairman, the proposed tentative maps conform to Nevada revised statutes, Title 19, and the Summerlin Development Standards, and have been approved by the Summerlin Design Review Committee. Staff, therefore, recommends approval of the tentative maps. At this time, I will pass the items to Public Works for some proposed condition changes. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Lucian Pyatt, <clears throat> um, the applicant requested some uh, chain, a, chain, a couple of changes that we agree with um, that deal with when they can record their final maps. So on item six, we'd like to amend condition number 11 to, in the first sentence to just remove the words, the construction drawings and replace them with bonds are posted. And a similar change to item number eight, condition 11, remove the words, the construction drawings and replace them with bonds are posted. So this allows them to record a final map if their bonds are posted. Thank you very much. Can I get your name and address for the record, please, sir? <clears throat> Chris Anderson, 10801 West Charleston, um, Howard Hughes property, director of engineering. And we agree with the condition, new conditions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Anderson. Uh, this was noticed as a public hearing. Anyone from the public like to be heard in these two items? Seeing no one, I will turn it over to the commission. Uh, Vice Chair. Yes, Mr. Chairman, if nobody has any comments, I would like to entertain a motion to approve uh, accepting the amended uh, read into the conditions from staff. Thank you. There's a motion on the floor for item number six. 
please post. And that motion carries. And uh, same for item number eight, uh, motion to approve with the uh, read in uh, amendments by staff. Thank you. There's a motion on the floor for number eight. Please cast your votes. Please post. That motion carries. Mr. Chairman, those two Thank items you. are final action this evening unless appealed to the city clerk's office within seven days. Thank you. Okay, moving on to item number nine, abeyance ZON 76105, applicant owner, S&D Grand Properties, LLC, for possible action request for rezoning from PR to C1 at 1353 Arville Street, Ward 1. Staff recommends approval. Can we get the staff report, please? Mr. Chairman, the existing general retail sales use conducted on site is consistent with the proposed limited commercial zoning district. The existing building on the subject parcel will remain compliant with the setback requirements if the proposed rezoning is approved. Surrounding land uses contain a mix of office, retail, and educational land uses consistent with the limited commercial zoning district. As such, staff recommends approval of this rezoning request. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I get your name and address for the record, please? Darla Graham. You want my personal address or the building address? The building's fine. 1353 Arville Street. Thank you. Uh, anything you want to tell us about the application before I go to public hearing? No. 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 Okay. Uh, this was noticed as a public hearing and from the public like to be heard in this item. Seeing no one, we will close the public hearing and I will start off. I spoke with Darla earlier today. And I think we addressed all the concerns. You know, as, as you start to get um, going down Charleston, where there's residential on both sides with a, a buffer of either professional office or it goes down to C1, as you start getting farther west from uh, the downtown area, uh, there's always concern about that transition from uh, professional office to residential. And I think staff did get this right, and we did talk about. Uh, on the phone today about um, future tenants coming in that were sensitive to waivers and stuff like this. I did talk to Commissioner Quinn briefly about it and um, I mean I don't have a, a problem support, supporting it but that was the reason why we pulled it off before because there was a little bit of concern of what was coming in. I think everyone's comfortable with the C1 now. It's just uh, hopefully the use can get there. One thing that was brought up that we talked about on the phone, um, we have people that come and camp behind the building occasionally, all in that area, and I know you guys have tried to uh, keep it clean and keep people moving, and one of the things you mentioned is that the city wouldn't allow you to have a light in the back. Uh, is that something, uh, it sounded like it was a condition that they had put on them previously because of the residential? And I think they do have a, a, a down light right now, is that correct? We, we do. We have on each side of the building a uh, low light that has um, like a cover type over it that directs the light down. Okay. Um, okay. I, I guess everyone in that neighborhood is just trying to do a little more. I, I like you explained to me on the phone. Um, so I, I don't have a problem with the application. Excuse I just me through you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank you for investigating um, this item of mine. I was out of town, and uh, he did a great job, and I agree with him completely. So I'm sorry I missed you, but um, it'll be a great place to fill up because we need tenants in there. Thank you. Yes, Would you like to make a motion? Even though you did all the work. <laughs> um, I'm going to make a motion for approval on abeyance item ZON 76105. Thank you. Thank you, you Commissioner. Thank you. There's a motion on the floor. Please cast your votes. Please post. And that motion carries. Thank you. Thanks, Darla. Mr. Chairman, that item will go forward to City Council and be heard as a part of their agenda on July 17th, 2019. Did you hear, uh, Darla, that that does go to City Council? Yes. Thank you. Sorry to talk from far away. Where are we? Okay, moving on to 13. number 13, abeyance VAR 75824, applicant RAD Management LLC, owner DSRS Properties LLC, for po possible action request for a variance to allow reduced lot sizes and widths for three proposed lots where 20,000 square foot Lot size and 100 foot lot width are required and to allow a rear yard setback of 26 where 35 is required 
is the minimum required at 835 Shetland Road, RE Zone, Ward 1, staff recommends denial. Can we get the staff report, please? Mr. Chairman, this is a request to divide the subject parcel into three lots to allow a future mapping realignment. The resulting lots fail to meet the minimum the minimum lot size and width requirements. No evidence of a unique or extraordinary circumstance has been presented and staff therefore recommends denial of the variance request. Please note that there are additional letters of protest since publication. Thank you. How are you doing? Can we get your name and address to the record, please? Hi, I'm uh, Russell Shaw and I, um, I'm a resident of Henderson, but um, I'm at representing the, ho uh, the property at 2628 West Charleston. Uh, I own the property, I'm also a physician practicing at the property. Thanks. Would you like to tell us about the application? Uh, sure. Um, so um, I've been practicing there for about 14 years, and um, uh, I acquired uh, at the beginning of this year um, the property at 835 Shetland. It's a residential property. Um, the um, uh, medical office that I have is about just about uh, 10,600 square feet. It's medical. It's been there for uh, many decades, and. Um, um, the, there's a, a problem with parking for our patients. Um, we have, um, um, we're about 25 parking spots less. Um, uh, when I started practicing, um, we used, uh, we were always short in uh, parking and um, uh, so we were trying to um, um, solve the parking issue. Um, the patients were parking on this uh, lot uh, during the recession across, um, you know, it was an empty dirt lot, and as the market has changed, um, uh, our patients were parking on Shetland Avenue. It's a street that has uh, no sidewalks, no lighting, and um, uh, so it's a safety issue. So um, we acquired uh, the house at 835 Shetland Avenue. It was owned by the previous neurologist that was there that when he developed it. Um, at that time, I think he was using it, um, the house portion for his, um, himself and his staff, but um, it's still residential. Um, so um, the thought process is um, that uh, we wanted to split the residential lot. It's about, uh, um, and we're going to uh, keep the Shetland Avenue look exactly the way it looked like a house. Um, um, and um, we're going to take away the patients that are parking on Shetland Avenue and put them into the back of the residential lot. Um, and um, this way it's safe for them. They have paved parking, lighting. Um, we redesigned the entire parking um, so that there's one entrance coming off uh, Charleston and Shetland. There's one direction, um, the first variance there's three. Um, the first variance is to take a sliver of land, which is 10 feet by 100 feet. And it is located, um, um, well, it's, it's located um, at the corner of Shetland, um, I guess on the west side. And it says the number nine on um, the map. Um, uh, and it's basically a high yield patient parking. They will all come from Charleston in one direction. They would have the two handicapped parking spots next to the radiology facility. They would then uh, only be able to go into those nine spots. Uh, right now, we're f I think it's about six feet by 100 feet, but we're, if we can add 10 feet, we get nine parking spots directly. So it's minimal. It takes away 10 feet, of course, from the Shetland Avenue. Um, and it's a 10 by 100 feet. And um, it gives 10 high yield, par nine high yield parking spots in that direction. Once they are filled, there's, we're changing the direction of the entire, um, uh, from um, where the entrance is coming on Charleston currently. We're switching it so that all the patients must go in a direction uh, east. Uh, after those nine parking spots, at that time, they, um, they will have a two uh, direction into the back of the residential uh, property um, where we do the second variance where we split. The, the split of the, um, the lot is like uh, 0.7 acres, 34,000 square feet. Um, what we want to do is put 13 parking spots, all paved with um, handicap, all patient parking. And then if that fills up, then they come again one direction back onto Charleston Avenue. 
So all parking spots are utilized before they leave. Uh, so all the parking has to be filled before they leave and then they go around and then they'll park probably on Shetland Avenue. The idea is, um, so instead of having 15 cars on Shetland Avenue, they're completely filling up all of our spots onto the property. Um, so there's three variances from what I can tell. This is a, um, so the first variance is uh, for the 10 by 100 feet to get nine parking spots, high yield. The second is to actually split the property in the back, keep the front as um, a residential, and keep the back, and we're gonna change it to commercial. And um, this will solve the whole issue on a permanent basis um, for this uh, medical property. Uh, Dr. Shaw, before I open this up to the public hearing, I, I remember this from our, uh, when it was obeyed. Did you have a, a meeting, a public meeting? Uh, yes, uh, I sent notices to just over 100 residents. Um, we had, um, I think about five people show up in the first um, meeting, and then I had um, two people uh, show up, or one person show up on the second meeting, but then I also talked to the neighbor. Uh, I think uh, the second meeting only, I think, um, just the neighbor adjacent to the 835 Shetland property, the immediate neighbor, 825 Shetland, came and spoke to, in fact, he actually, you know, he, he's here and he also spoke to me um, on last Friday at my office. And um, um, I think that they understand why I'm doing this, what's the purpose. Um, I'm a patient advocate, so, I'm doing it for my patients. I want safety. I don't want anybody to fall. Um, I'm trying to fix a problem that I've uh, been dealing with for many years. Um, uh, I think that there's a concern in the neighborhood that it's going into commercial. Um, I'm not adding any square footage to this property. I'm just trying to take the situation we have. We have too many patients that park on basically Shetland Avenue. I think that by doing this, Shetland Avenue will look very residential. It'll take away all the commercial from my um, medical office, at least up to all these spots, which is gonna be tremendous. And yes, we'll have a few overflow because we're short certainly 30, 25 patients a day. All right, thank you, Dr. Shaw. Okay, sure. uh, this is notice as a public hearing. Anyone from the public like to be heard? Please come forward. I see one person, I see two people. There are three microphones. Please come up. I need your name and address for the record, if you're for or against, and why. Um, my name is Chris Andrasfay, A-N-D-R-A-S-F-A-Y. I live at 825 Shetland Road. Um, my wife and I oppose this variance. Uh, we came to the neighborhood to, to live in a traditional neighborhood that it is, and we do not want to see it changed. Um, as I looked at the, uh, the interactive agenda today, I don't know if you guys have looked through the whole thing. There's been 17 responses on the postcards and uh, filling out the form. All 17 are against it. Um, that speaks volumes. Um, we are against it in the form that Mr. Shaw proposes. Um, the, the three variances is, is we don't support it. Um, in relation to what he mentioned over parking, I'm the adjacent neighbor and in my viewpoint, parking on the street is not an issue. There's roughly three to six cars parked there a day, and this is obviously staff. These are um, the same cars all the time. So I can understand where that parking is an issue, uh, but I don't think that this uh, variance is the way to go about it. I spoke with Mr. Shaw over an option uh, for 11 spots. But um, that's not for this case. It's for him to bring up if he wishes. And uh, that would have a little bit more support than this has zero. So hopefully you guys feel the same way, and we'll see what happens. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. What's your name and address Hi. for the record? My name is Tony McDonald, M-C-D-O-N-A-L-D. I live at 808 Shetland Road. Uh, I did meet with Dr. Shaw at his first uh, neighborhood meeting. Um, He's a very nice gentleman. Um, however, I still oppose this, uh, the option he wants to do. Um, I've lived on Shetland for uh, 20 years, and we have people that park, even though we don't have sidewalks and we don't have um, parking on our street. There's people parked up and down our street because 
if they're not parking in the driveway, they're parking. And it's really not a big overflow. Um, as Chris said, it is probably, there may be five or six cars on the street. Uh, it doesn't bother me, and I just don't really want to see any professional or commercial use for this property. Okay, thank you. Thank you for coming out. Anyone else like to be heard? Seeing no one else, I'll ask the applicant, Dr. Shaw, to come back. I'll give you a minute if you'd like a rebuttal before I turn it over to the commission for discussion. Um, so, um, I think that there is, um, there's, certainly we, um, there are times that we have quite a few patients that have difficulty parking. Um, we see it, um, obviously we st staggered, uh, tried to um, decrease the overflow. Um, I think that um, there's, I'm trying to solve an issue where there is a parking shortage of 25 spots. Um, and um, I can tell you that I do respect my neighbors. Um, they have, um, at one time, we had so many spots on Shetland Avenue that there were no parking signs tow away up and down all the way to Palomino. I think that's another street. Um, um, we don't want to be like that. We, I've tried to design this that um, nobody on Shetland will know that there's a commercial parking in the back. Um, I think uh, the longevity of this particular building is probably 30 years. Um, at the end of 30 years, I think that whoever, if I'm not alive, um, whoever designs this building, they should have smaller square footage print, uh, footprint, not 10,500 square feet. And that um, if there was uh, something that was granted here in the council, then after 30 years, I'm not looking to change the back property permanently, maybe a 30-year variance that it's only for parking for this particular structure. If they change the structure, whoever owns it, if I don't own it, if I'm not here, um, uh, then, then it goes back to residential. Um, I understand um, uh, why neighbors don't want to change anything. I think the street looks beautiful. And I actually think that those five or six parking spots, or 15 or 20, we're not going to uh, hurt. Actually, we're going to make it look even more residential. And I think um, that's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shaw. I will turn it over to the commission for discussion. Commissioner Quinn. Thank you, um, Dr. Shaw. Um, you know, the, the issue is, for me, um, this is how commercial encroachment starts, okay? So let's say we, you know, are in favor with you tonight. What's to say the guy next door to you wants to do the same thing? So eventually what happens is the commercial weeds into that beautiful neighborhood. To me, that neighborhood starts just north of your office. It's a neighborhood. I'm concerned that the building you're talking about in front of the parking is going to go to C1. That's commercial. And once you get a commercial, you know, designation that close into a neighborhood, it's very hard to say no to the guy across the street and, and it encroaches into a neighborhood that is the heartbeat, in my opinion, of Ward 1. I will not support this item. I find it um, the beginning of an encroachment of commercial into a neighborhood that should be completely um, stays the same, looks the same. And if we say yes to you because you're a good man and you're going to do the right thing, it's hard to say no to the next guy. So for me, I will not support this item tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And I mean, just to add on to that, similar to the last item, uh, these are the difficult applications that where you have commercial or professional office uh, next to residential and trying to find transition. Um, this one being right up against the house and essentially we'd be, con we'd be making non-conforming buildings out of the house and the existing structure, is that correct? Uh, yes, Chairman. On the uh, the northern lot there, there's actually a condition to demolish that building if this variance were approved. Okay, and then and then the house becomes now non-conforming. Is that non-conforming as well? 
Correct, uh, Mr. Chairman. So the House, because the the variance that would be approved here, that lot now becomes non-conforming as to the RE standards. So while they wouldn't necessarily have to come forward with the any new variance as long as it continues to be a house, um, the lot would be substandard now for the RE requirements with regard to lot size. Um, uh, for and lot coverage potentially for this uh, smaller lot. Thank you. And 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 again, um, I'm comparing to the, the last application. But uh, if the last application came forward, they wanted C1 and a bunch of waivers and variances. I, I wouldn't have been supportive of the, of the application. And uh, I, I think you put forward something that might make good common sense, but uh, the repercussions on the other side, I think, are too greater, so I won't be supporting it as well. Can I get may a motion? I, may I ask one question? Uh, that I, I, oh, I, sorry. I think we're going to go to vote at this point. Thank you. Thank um, you. Regarding item number 14, abeyance variance, 13. I'm sorry, 13, abeyance variance 75824, I'm following staff's recommendation this evening for denial. There's a motion on the floor. Please cast your votes. The yes vote is for denial. I don't, I don't have it. Go, go, click up here. Click up here, right there. And then oh, sorry. Got it. Please post. And that motion carries. Mr. Chairman, that item will move forward to City Council and be heard for their consideration at the July 17th, 2019 Council meeting. So you're clear it's going to move forward, Doctor. You'll, it'll be heard again at City Council. I understand. Thank, thank, thank you. you OK, moving on to item number 14, abeyance SDR 76062, site development plan review, public hearing applicant owner, Hellfire Media, LLC, for possible action request for site development plan review for proposed 1,542 square foot addition to an existing 10,594 square foot museum with waivers of the downtown Las Vegas overlay parking and setback standards at 600 East Charleston Boulevard, Ward 3. Staff recommends approval. Uh, I will disclose that I do live within the notification area. I don't believe it affects me any greater or lesser, so I will be voting on the application. Uh, staff, can we get the staff report, please? Mr. Chairman, while the proposed development does not meet Title 19 setback and parking requirements, staff does find that the proposal is in harmony with the goals and intent of the Vision 2045 Downtown Las Vegas Master Plan and surrounding properties. Therefore, staff recommends approval of the site development plan review. Please note that there are additional letters of protest since publication. Thank you. Thank you. Can we get your name and address for the record, please? Jason Mayhew, 652 Middlegate, Henderson, 89015, here representing the owner. Um, what uh, we're uh, trying to do here is to add uh, an adi additional space onto the front of the build, oh, well, onto the side of the building, on the 6th Street, Street side of the building, uh, which is going to be uh, a garage basically so we can showcase a couple of haunted vehicles and then also have some office additional office space on the second level of the building there um, the reduction in the side setback there was so that way we could get two cars in there if we lose that five feet we would only be able to put one car in there um, there uh, the owner does have a parking agreement with the Masonic Lodge to use 40 of their parking spaces. And they uh, patrol up and down 6 to make sure that their clients are not parking over there. Uh, we abate it uh, from the last meeting so that way I could meet with the uh, HOA uh, of that area. The HOA president, I met with him yesterday. And uh, he did say that he would give us his uh, approval uh, for this. Um, so if you have any questions, please ask. Thank you. This is noticed as a public hearing and from the public like to be heard in this item. Seeing no one from the public, I will turn it over to the commission for discussion. Uh, I, I will say I think you guys have done a, a much better job now managing the cars that have kind of lined up during busy times with the, um, I, for the haunted experience. <laughs> I've never made it inside the building. Uh, 
So I, I think I'm, I'm fine supporting this, and I'm happy to make a motion if it, okay. Item number 14, I'll make a motion for, I can, yeah, I can make a motion. Yeah, yeah, of course. I can kind of do anything I want. <laughs> uh, all right. Item number 14, abeyance SDR 76062. I will make a motion for approval. <laughs> Thank you. Please post. And that motion carries. Mr. Yep. Chairman, that item is final action this evening, unless appealed to the city clerk's office within 10 days. So it's final action. It is final action Beautiful. this evening. Thank you very much. You all have a wonderful night. You too. Thank you. Moving on to related items 15 through 17. Item 15, VAR 76335, Applicant Owner, Patron Investments, LLC. For possible action request for a variance to allow zero foot side yard setback where 10 feet is required at 1618 and 1622 East Charleston Boulevard, Ward 3, staff recommends denial. Related item 16, VAR 76336, for possible action request for a variance to allow 30 parking spaces where 32 parking spaces are required, Ward 3, staff recommends denial. And finally, related item number 17, SDR 76337, for possible action request for site development plan review for proposed 871 square foot addition to an existing building with a waiver to allow a zero foot landscape buffer along the north perimeter where 15 feet is required and a zero foot landscape buffer along the east perimeter where eight feet is required. Ward three, staff recommends denial. Can we get the staff report, please? Mr. Chairman, the proposed development does not meet Title 19 setback parking and landscape buffer requirements. No evidence of a unique or extraordinary circumstance has been presented, and staff concludes that the applicant's hardships are preferential in nature. Staff therefore recommends denial of all applications. Please note that there are additional letters of support and protest since publication. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I get your name and address for the record, please? Okay, my name is Senja Diaz, uh, 1724 East Charleston Boulevard. What was, what was your last name, sir? Angel Diaz. Angel Diaz. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Diaz, could you tell us about the application? Yeah, we just tried to make this building looks better for the city. The see, could that you that speak into the mic, please? Thank we you. just tried to build this building better to the city. We see it's a bunch of stuff there. We want to construct a new restaurant there uh, for the look better for the city. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Diaz. This was noticed as a public hearing. Anyone from the public like to be heard in this item? Seeing no one, I will turn it over to the commission for discussion. Um, starting off with me, or Lou, Commissioner Savio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I drove past this uh, property two days ago, and honestly, I think it would be an improvement if something was placed on that site, just to, like Mr. Diaz stated, um, to clean up that situation that's going on over there. Um, I'm actually, uh, I know it's a popular restaurant, yeah. very popular restaurant. I think uh, it, would, it would be in a good location. Um, to me, I think it's harmonious and compatible based on what's already there. Um, so, I mean, I, I can see myself supporting it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Diaz, have you, uh, on the landscaping, there wasn't any way to get any more landscaping mm -hmm. on the site? The is, is no space for the parkings. That's what it is, no space for the parking. I just try to get more space for our customers. Oh, I understand. I, I just, I, I look at a zero foot landscape buffer, um, you know, and it looks like residential on the back side the back. of our, of the building. And, and I agree with Vice Chair DeSalvio. I think it's a, a great improvement and um, something that will take something that's run down and make it a lot better. I just also want to be, sensitive to a variance with neighbors directly behind us and as we try to improve Charleston, mm -hmm. you know, try to make sure that we have <laughs> landscaping and... The thing is, this property, that's the owner's property. So that's why we want to put our good money there so it looks, it's going to be like a, the start for a new uh, company. So you want to take like a design for that one. Flagship. Okay. Yeah, uh, most of the properties that he has, he's rented, but this one is his own, so he's going to try to look better. And I, and I appreciate that. Um, 
you know, we struggled down Charleston with the temporary signs that are constantly put up. And again, um, I keep going back to landscaping. There's a project on uh, Maryland and Charleston where there was a, a great improvement with the um, uh, Circle K and the Savers. And oh, yeah. It really starts they start to shine. Doing a good job there. Yeah, doing a great job there. Yeah. And, and, um, but Vice Chair, did you want to go forward with the motion? Uh, yes, seeing no other comments, um, I'd like to make a motion to approve VAR 76335. There's a motion on the floor. Please cast your votes. Please post. Now motion carries. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve item 16, VAR 76336. So motion on the floor, please cast your votes. Please post. And that motion carries. And Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve item number 17, SDR 76337. There's a motion on the floor, please cast your votes. Please post. That motion carries. Mr. Chairman, those items will move forward to City Council and be heard as a part of their agenda on July 17th, 2019. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item number 18, VAR 76486, applicant owner Lone Mountain Estates LLC, for possible action on a request for a variance to allow no offsite improvements where such are required for an approved single family residential subdivision at the southwest corner of Grand Canyon Drive and Helena Avenue, Ward 4, staff recommends denial. Can we get the staff report, please. Mr. Chairman, approval of this variance request would result in the removal of pavement, curb and gutter, sidewalk, street lights, sanitary sewer, drainage improvements, and landscaping in the public right-of-way. Sub subsequently, subsequently <laughs> any, cost, any cost to provide possible future off-site improvements would be borne by the city. No evidence of a unique or extraordinary circumstance has been presented, and staff concludes that the applicant's hardship is preferential in nature. Staff therefore recommends denial of variance request. Please note that there are additional letters of protest since publication. Thank you. Thank you. Can we get your name and address for the record, please? Robert Cunningham, 6030 South Jones Boulevard with Tanning Engineering. What we have or our request tonight is uh, to a variance to allow the offsites to be waived for a portion of Helena and a portion of Grand Canyon. This is the overall assemblage of property for this development. The portion you see that's in green here is the portion in the city. Uh, the balance of the majority of the, the site being developed is in the county. These are a series of 40,000 and 30,000 square foot lots located on the far west side of town near Lone Mountain, which is right in the, the background here. The county has allowed us to move forward with leaving the streets as is and putting a covenant on the uh, property uh, owners so when street improvements are ever required in this area, all the property owners would equally bear and pay for their fair share cost of it. Uh, that's the condition that's been placed on all the properties in this assemblage of property, except for what's in the city. The city has put a waiver, uh, administrative waiver is being allowed, but what's being requested is that the developer basically pay for the improvements off of the bond and fee estimate to the city. What we're trying to do is have all of the, the development here be equal, so that if you buy a house here, you would have the same exact conditions on your house as here, understanding that this is in the city, this is in the county. Um, that's what we've requested. I understand staff's recommending denial. We're hopeful that you'll allow this to move forward in this fashion. I wanted to share with you what the developer's looking at putting out on the streets is to basically uh, build a wall along the street with in front of these large estate homes, landscape it, put trees in, and then extend uh, landscaping basically out as far as they can to what would be the pavement. Um, so you'll end up with a very nice, consistent street scene along these streets on these estate rural lots. Um, we think that being consistent with all of the community as they, they're going to sell these as large custom homes makes sense. Um, it's our understanding, I've talked to Lucian, and staff has um, some proposed if conditions and uh, changes. 
Um, we will work with staff to try to come to some resolve on a, a fee if we can, but the request was initially to be consistent with what was approved in the county. Um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Thank you. This was noticed as a public hearing and from the public like to be heard in this item. Seeing no one, I will turn it over to the commissioner for discuss discussion. Commissioner Tucson. Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Lucian, what kind of conditions are we putting on this property? Uh, so just uh, through the chair to Commissioner Tucson, to give you a little bit of background, um, the county and city are working on rural improvement standards today, and we hope to have them adopted this year. What we're um, requests a re what our recommendation is to the conditions is that they pay 100% of what that future um, improvement, rural improvement will be. So in lieu of paying 100% of the urban improvement, which is the full width of the 80 foot street, we're recommending that they pay still 100% but of a narrow width. Uh, what we've noticed as far as um, you know, the difference with the county and the city with the uh, covenants, the reason we the city moved to, to a uh, deferral situations because when we go into the future to do an SID, we can only charge the amount that the prop the adjacent property receives an increased value due to the improvement. So just in an extreme example, if a property only uh, receives a penny in increased value from our improvement, we can only charge them a penny. And so we, what we do is we collect the improvement now and when the ultimate improvement is constructed, we use this money to build the full width. What we believe is that in the ultimate condition, it will still be rural, so it won't, a, a standard um, 80 is two lanes in each direction and a center turn lane. We believe the ultimate condition of this road will be uh, center turn lane and just one lane in each direction, so it's a lot narrower than the, than the urban 80. But we are, as a recommendation, asking that they pay for those improvements um, in lieu of the full improvement. So I have a condition change if it's the, the commission's desire to approve with the if approved condition, I have a condition change to add. Uh, I haven't had the opportunity to meet with Mr. Cunningham, but this really looks like a really nice project. And you are surrounded by counties, so I understand why you want to keep it rural. Uh, are you agreeable to the conditions that staff has recommended? Um, we're agreeable to work with staff uh, on those conditions. Um, what it amounts to is a, a fee, basically, that mm -hmm. Public Works wants us to pay. Uh, ultimately, the developer would like not to pay any of that fee and be consistent with the county, <laughs> but we understand there's a happy medium that has to be met, so we're willing to work with them and um, on the condition. I don't think the dollar amount is set exactly per the condition, so uh, with that being said, uh, as long as that's the case, we would agree to continue to work with them to hone in on the exact dollar amount with the proposed condition that Lucian has. Anybody else have anything to say? Vice Chair Salvio. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, well, seeing I got just got told the political answer to that question, I'm going to have to vote in, against this then, if that's the case. <laughs> political answer was he was specifically asked if he would pay the 100 percent and he says no I'll agree to work with staff not agree to pay so with that said I'm not going to support it okay so I don't and I guess the question I have I don't know how we agree uh, on a condition but then say we're just going to keep working to get there is that something we can do Lucian uh, no Commissioner Chairman I, uh, I think the way if we write a condition that is very specific about what they need to pay for, then whatever the bond amount at the time they come in for improvement plans is, that's what they'll have to pay. There won't really be, the, the part that might be a little bit in question is the current uh, unadopted, what the, the draft standard they're working on doesn't address um, street lighting and intersection improvements. It just addresses a, cr a cross section that, as if it was a straight street and didn't intersect with any other street. Okay. So there may be a little bit of um, clarifying, but I think with the amended condition that, that I'll have for you, that pretty much spells out everything they'll need to pay for. Okay, because I, I, I certainly, yeah. I just want to remind you that, you know, he's not required to uh, agree to the conditions per se you can grant or you can put on any condition you believe would make this uh, application more appealable to you. So you're, you're, you're able to do that without his agreeing to the condition. Okay, so. thank you very much. I, I guess uh, to get my support, we would have to get to that 
Well, I'm fine with the narrow condition that, that Public Works is proposing, but I would need the applicant to agree to that. And uh, I, I don't, it doesn't sound like there's much of a negotiation. I mean, doesn't the bond's going like to be what the bond's going to be. And I think the city went through a long process. I remember working with the home builders to uh, come, up a way, come up with a way that makes it so people don't get stuck years down the road with an SID and uh, makes it fair. So I, I guess I'd, I'd ask the applicant, would you be good with the condition that Public Works put on it, puts on the? The, the condition that they have, and correct me if I'm wrong, it doesn't actually spell out a dollar amount. It just indicates what we would work with staff to bond, you know, off of their bond, what we would agree to pay for. Okay, so, so once they come up with their dollar amount, uh, however it is, then you would have to pay it to keep things moving forward. Is that correct, Lucian? That's correct. They would not be able to get an approved uh, drawing set of plans without paying the, the deferral improvement fee. Okay. Because uh, I just feel like, uh, Mr. Cunningham, you're, you're stating it like it's a big negotiation after the fact, but it sounds like uh, the city's going to find out what this standard is and say, well, here's the bond, you know, here's the improvement amount. If you'd like to post a bond for it, that can help you move forward. Okay, if that's the case, then uh, once we see the amount, yeah, then I guess not knowing that amount today, uh, that's the hard part for us to agree to pay an amount we don't know how much it, it is, if that okay, makes sense. Okay, I can understand that, but I can tell you as a developer, you, you can look at the other standard that is 100%, and you can say, well, that's what it would take to build this, and that's what my bond would be, and right. knowing it would be less, then you can make a decision from there. I mean, that's what I have to do, so... Right, and, and that's all I'm saying is that we agree that we'll meet with Lucian, determine what that amount is, and then it, you know, pay it or we'll have to come back here, I guess. Okay. Uh, so, but it, it sounds like we can't hold it because it's going to be a my while. Th my thing is, uh, Chairman, you can place the condition on him. If he wants to appeal that condition to the city council, he's able to do that. But you're able to place whatever conditions you believe are warranted at this point in time without his agreeing to it. Okay. So, so uh, Lucian, okay. maybe you could read the motion and... Uh, if Commissioner Tucson is agreeable, then we can get to a vote. Sure, Mr. Chairman, and, and let me just clarify, the reason they're actually asking for the variance is because the code currently requires 100% of the full width. The variance allows them to pay something less than the 100% of the full width. We're still requiring 100%, but it's of a narrower width. I understand. And, yeah. and so um, the change that we'd make uh, in the second, we, we're adding some a couple of sentences. Um, before the second to last, uh, before the last sentence, we're going to add, it's just to clarify the street lighting fees. So, street lights are not required on Helena Avenue, and street lighting spacing on Grand Canyon Drive shall follow standard drawing 311.1 for a 60 foot width. Street lighting and, and a sidewalk ramp at the intersection of Helena Avenue and Grand Canyon Drive shall also be considered part of the required offsite improvements. And Lucian, for the record, to clarify, that was an amendment to condition six. Correct. Okay. Thank you. So we hear an amended condition. Uh, Commissioner Tucson? Yeah, I was confused. I thought it was a conditional maybe here, but I understand now that you're agreeing to whatever staff is saying for the to go he forward. He doesn't have to agree. You don't that, have to that agree. That would be your amended condition. Right. Well, that would be my amended condition. If, if, if uh, I would make them, if there are no other comments, I would make a motion to approve with all staff's conditions. Thank you very much. There's a motion on the floor with and the amended conditions. And that includes the amended conditions. Correct. Amended conditions, Thank yes. You. Yes. Please post. And that motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. And that matter is final action this evening unless appeal to the city clerk's office within 10 days. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item number 19, VAR 76293, applicant owner, Cypress Sub 2, LLC. For possible action request for a variance to allow a five-foot front yard setback where 20 feet is required at a 10-foot rear yard, rear yard and a 12-foot corner side yard setback where 15 feet is required for proposed single-family dwelling at the northeast corner of Ogden Avenue and 18th Street, Ward 3, staff recommends denial. Can we get the staff report, please? Mr. Chairman, the proposed development does not meet Title 19 setback requirements. No evidence of a unique or extraordinary circumstance has been presented, and staff concludes that the applicant's hardship is preferential in nature. Staff therefore recommends denial of the variance request. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you get your name and address for the record, please? How are you? Uh, Stavros, Georgiou, 7450 Southeastern Avenue, Las Vegas, Nevada. Could you tell us about the application, please? 
Uh, yes, this has uh, once been a dream of mine. Um, I've been somewhat obsessed with uh, shipping container homes. Uh, I wanted to do something unique. Uh, this is a property or a lot that's been vacant for the last 50 years. Um, I was actually hoping to, uh, to do a shipping container home. Um, uh, it's going to be unique. I mean, like the challenge, I, th I think, is that uh, on the corner, uh, the variance is because on the Ogden side, I have a 15-foot instead of a 5-foot, like it would be for a normal lot, which makes my, uh, my footprint a bit more narrow. Um, the design is to actually have an interior courtyard living, so it's on the inside. Um, I was planning on dedicating the exterior to local artists. Uh, to add to actually beautify the neighborhood, uh, to change the uh, actual murals three to four times a year, keep it interesting, and make it, maybe make it more of a, almost an attraction, and uh, and even perhaps a uh, uh, a reason to invest more in the area. Uh, as you know, uh, people are investing uh, in Fremont Street up to about 15th Street, but past there, uh, there's not much interest. Um, I'm really trying to be, I'd say, a catalyst. Uh, for future development, uh, perhaps even this style of building for uh, low-income housing in, in other areas. Um, I guess also um, I'm building it uh, uh, with a second suite that's attached um, with my with my mother in, in mind. She's getting a bit older, and I wanted to give her a place to uh, to live as well. Um, I guess my 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 one thing that I wanted to point out is that there is a right of way. Um, there's a bit of a buffer. Uh, to the curb from uh, where the house would end. There's an 18-foot buffer on 18th Street. There's also, I think, about uh, an eight-foot right-of-way on Ogden Street. I, st I spoke with Steve Gebecki in planning uh, about whether 18th Street or Ogden would ever, uh, in the future, have plans for expansion. Uh, he didn't see any reason why there would be. Um, so I'm hoping that I'd be able to actually uh, ask for those variances to push the uh, push it out towards, uh, push the, excuse me, I'm a little bit nervous, uh, to, to push the footprint a bit out further towards 18th Street. Um, I'm working with shipping containers, so they are standard sizes of 40 foot and 20 foot, so I, I don't have that much sway that way, and I was really hoping to preserve the interior courtyard uh, for the maximum space. Okay, thank you. Oops, sure. uh, this was noticed as a public hearing, and from the public like to be heard in this item. Seeing no one, I will turn it over to the commission for discussion. Um, I, I, Trinity's not here, so I will kick it off. I, you know, when I first saw it come through, I saw the big stack with the mural art, so I was a little confused on mm -hmm. what we were looking at. Uh, and I, I just saying it's just an example of what you wanted to do with the mural art. But yeah. I read shipping containers. I saw that, and I thought, well, what's going on with the five-story uh, building? It, as I started to get into it, I started to understand sorry, yeah, it more. That That's okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I think you're going into an area, you know, when people think of where I live in, in my neighborhood, they think it's a tough neighborhood, and it's um, back, you know, 15 years ago, um, we tried to be a catalyst for something, and I think that um, your building would be doing the same. Uh, I agree that it's, you know, after 50 years, it's nice to see something come forward um, and as residential. Um, and it does stop kind of at Maryland Parkway and, and, and drops off with developments that are there. And I know Trinity, he's developed some stuff and done a great job with uh, his projects in that area. Um, so I see there is a, a staff recommended, re has recommended denial. I can understand why, because it doesn't meet the, the boxes with the variances. But this is something, I think, different and unique. And it is in the downtown area. So going to zero lot line. Um, I think can work, especially being on a thoroughfare on two sides with Ogden and 19th. Uh, so this will have my support on the application. Uh, yeah, unless any, anyone else, uh, Commissioner Tucson? I, I, you know, I grew up in this area. I grew up downtown, and I, I just think this is awesome. I, I, I think it's out of, out of the box. It's, it's forward thinking, and, and I'm really excited about it. Thank oh. you for, for proposing this. Thank you. Uh, would you like to make a motion, Commissioner Tucson? Motion to approve VAR 776293. Thank you. There's a motion on the floor. Please cast your votes. May I say something else? Give, one second. I don't know if this is a good timing or not. No, yeah, this is better. Don't talk yourself out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, please post. And that motion carries. 
And Mr. Chairman, that item will go forward to City Council and be heard as a part of their agenda on July 17th, 2019. Okay. Thank, did you want to say something quickly before? Um, I was going to ask, um, I know it's a bit after the fact. Um, yep. I did ask for the uh, for the distance in the rear as far as uh, as a 10 foot, but if I was to go 15 foot and give that more space because there is a telephone pole back there. I mean, well, not a telephone okay. pole, but. Is this going on to city council? Yeah, we'll oh, city at, council. at this point, we voted. It's approved. It is. Uh, it will go to city council. Okay. Um, so that's something that you can discuss there at that point. Uh, check with your staff planner because if you make any adjustments that diminish the amount of setback that you have indicated here, it actually will have to start all the way back through the process because you'll have to re-notice it. So if you intensify any of the deviations that you're requesting, even if you're offsetting it elsewhere, we'll have to start it all over. Okay. Just I'll, as a heads I'll, up. I'll be happy with the way it is then. Thank, okay. you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Moving on to item number 20, VAR 76338, applicant Alex Mazzola, owner Brandy Mazzola Living Trust, for possible action or request for a variance to allow a zero foot side yard setback for an existing structure, class two detached patio structure, where three feet is required at 8308 West Deer Springs Way, Ward 6. Staff recommends denial. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. just for the record, I'd like to state that uh, I do know the Mazzola family, and uh, I have done uh, business uh, with the Mazzola brothers at, at different times, and so uh, I'll be abstaining from any conversation or voting on this matter. Thank you, Commissioner Williams. Thank you for the disclosure. Appreciate that. Can we get the staff report, please? Mr. Chairman, this is a request for a variance to allow an existing 113 square foot accessory structure, class two detached patio structure, which is set back zero feet from the east property line where three feet is required and was constructed without obtaining building permits. On the basis of the above information, staff finds that the applicant's hardship is self-imposed and therefore staff recommends denial of this request. Please note that additional letters of support have been received since publication. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you get your name and address for the record, please? Alex Mazzola, 8308 Deer Springs, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89149, and my wife, Brandy Mazzola. Okay. Um, we, we built this in the backyard. When we purchased this house in January, about two years ago, we redid the whole front yard. I'm talking about tore everything up. The inside of the house tore everything up. We put probably about $70,000 in upgrading our whole house. Um, the backyard thing matches with everything we've done with pavers and um, the people we share the wall with are actually neighbors of ours that are probably the best neighbors you could have. They're actually here today. Um, and we did walk up and down Deer Springs and out of 33 houses, 27 of them uh, signed approved and the six that did not were just not home. They didn't decline or anything. They weren't home to answer. Um, we didn't know, I didn't know that I needed permission to build in the backyard a barbecue, um, and that was my fault. So we think that uh, somebody saw a Facebook picture, it was an old neighbor, long story short, they uh, have called uh, on us, um, and now we see that you know, we made a mistake. The, it did cost me about $17,000 to build this, um, owner built, and um, I'm hoping somehow we could, you know, figure out the variance and get this passed. Thank you, Mr. Mazzola. Uh, this is noticed as a public hearing and from the public like to be heard. If I can get your name and your address for the record, please. And if you're for or against. Uh, my name is Patricia Alvers. I live at 8304 Deer Springs Way. Um, the trees you see in these pictures are mine. Those are in my yard. It's a nice um, tree. I <laughs> I think uh, one of the nice things about Brandy and Alex living next door to us um, is that they have done all the improvements that actually make my house worth more. Um, but really one of the more compelling parts of this is that uh, Timberlake, our development, is not actually a traditional HOA. It's a landscape and maintenance association. So we actually are responsible for that wall. So um, I get that it's within three feet, but at the same time it's kind of if something happens to it, we've had a neighbor who had a, a hit and run that they were responsible for fixing. And so if something with this happened, it would be up to Brandy and Alex or myself to fix the wall. And we think the kitchen is great. I, have, I am an original owner here along with that house that was built at the same time as mine. And it has never, ever looked as nice with as much care taken 
um, and I'm, <laughs> we're, we're thrilled to have them there after all of the foreclosures on our street and in our development. It's just really nice that people are investing in that. And I would really encourage you to approve this. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming out. Anyone else from the public like to be heard? I see one more person. Any, anyone else after this gentleman? No, last person. Need your name and address for the record, sir. Yeah, my name is Ron Calderon, 8320 Farmbrook Court. Uh, I'm in favor of allowing the variance on this particular property. I don't know the individuals, uh, but I did see pictures of their backyard, and I did go past the front of their house, and they did an extremely well job on the front, and it would just be nice if the rest of the people in that association would take as much care and pride in their home as I see that they did. So I'm in support of it, and I hope that you would allow that variance. Uh, you don't have any... Uh, negative complaints from the people that are surrounding that particular home and as a neighbor just spoke who is right next door to it and shares that same wall she's also in favor of that variance so I think that since there is no negative feedback on this particular request for the variance that it would be allowed by the council thank you very much thank thanks you. for coming out uh, okay, so you know us, I'll close the public hearing, turn over to the Commission for discussion. Commissioner DeSalvio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, looks like we got the trifecta here. We got the HOA has no problem, the neighbors got no problem, and I don't have no problem. So with that said, I'd like to make a motion for approval of this item. Uh, there's a motion on the floor. Uh, for uh, VAR 76338. Thank you. Please post. And that motion carries. And Mr. Chairman, that item is final action this evening unless appealed to the city clerk's office within 10 days. All right. Thank you very much. Mr. Mazzola, weren't you citizen of the I'm month? I'm citizen of the month. So you went That's from a hero thing. to zero. What are you doing? Call me and, and making me come hero. down here when I'm citizen of the month. Huh? What, what's going on in here? No. All right. Good luck to you, Thank Mr. Chair. Thank you so much. Mr. Chair? Yes. If he could uh, also submit that petition to the clerk. Out of yeah. Mr. Mazzola. Could you hand the petition into the clerk for the record? For the record? Thank you. Jeff. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, item number 21, I will be abstaining from. It relates to the cannabis industry, which my family is in, and to Mr. Silito, who I consider a friend. So I will turn over to Vice Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, item number 21, VAR 76344, is a variance. Uh, application is Ben uh, Salito, uh, owner 1800 Industrial LLC, for possible action or request for a variance to allow a zero uh, foot setback where five feet is required for two proposed monument signs at 1800 Industrial Road uh, in Ward 3. Staff recommends a denial. Can I get the staff report, please? Mr. Chairman, uh, the applicant is proposing to install two double-sided monument signs at an existing marijuana dispensary. The proposed signs are positioned over two landscape islands containing trees, thus requiring removal of existing planting materials. While moving the proposed monument signs five feet from the property line would allow conformance to Title 19 requirements, this would result in an encroachment into the existing drive aisle on the subject property. However, an existing wall sign for the marijuana dispensary is contained on the subject site. Additionally, the use is advertised on a billboard located adjacent to the subject site facing Industrial Road. As such, staff has determined that the proposed signage is inconsistent with the intent of Title 19 sign development standards. Therefore, staff recommends denial of this project. Thank you. Please state your name for the record. For the record, Ben Silito, 1800 Industrial Road. I'm here representing Oasis Cannabis. Um, and I appreciate the time that staff spent um, reviewing this. You know, it's not necessarily about a um, advertising of the use, it's more about a safety issue. So, you know, we're, we're proud of um, the, what we've done in the last four years since we've been on Industrial Road. We're, we're part of the gateway redevelopment and we've done a lot to beautify that building itself and also to attract additional businesses to the area. And as a result, occupancy has both increased and visitation to our building has increased. And if you look at the way the um, 
the traffic flows on the property here, you can see that the parking in the front of the building requires the entrance on the north side of the property. Um, and then the way that you access Oasis Cannabis is on the south side of the property through this driveway here. So what we have is uh, an issue where these people, people that are parking here, they need, to par they need to enter the property on this side, and then everyone really should be entering the property on this side so that we have a, a, a smooth flow of traffic uh, from the north side to the south side of the property, and then back to the, the lot where people are entering and exiting through this driveway. And there's enough room, but then when you add, um, you know, people coming in in this spot while people are coming out and then coming here, you kind of have this traffic congestion that's occurring. Uh, a setback of five feet would actually put those signs within the driveway. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're aware of the, the beautification with the landscaping and we're, we're open to making um, concessions to try to provide uh, landscaping um, there as well. Um, but we think it's important to address the traffic flow. Uh, we're seeing a number of visitors each day and, and it's only increasing and, and we, we would like to get ahead of the issue. So, um, so with that, I, I would love to entertain any questions. This is noticed as a public hearing. Does anybody wish to speak on this item? Please come forward. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and open up to the commissioners. <laughs> I guess it'll be me. I got just a couple questions because in the briefing, um, I, you want to remove like your only landscape. <laughs> sure. It's, it, it, it certainly does seem counterintuitive to the beautification of the lot, and, and that wasn't a an easy decision to make, and, and like I said, if the if the commission would like to impose a condition of, re, you know, replanting some landscaping when we're finished with the signage, I think we'd be happy to. to and and that leads me that. into that too. There's like signage everywhere on that building, on on poles that it's not supposed to be. Uh, you got a billboard sign that's you know a couple hundred feet up or whatever, <laughs> pointing with a big arrow. You sure. got, I mean, it's just so much signage. Can I just ask why you need more signage and remove a landscape buffer to, to obtain it? It's not necessarily a matter of needing more signage. Uh, it's it's certainly an accessory signage. It's not something that is. Sorry. When you drive down Industrial Road at this point now, it's really hard to miss Oasis Cannabis. So, so that's then why, not. Why are we here? Well, it's really a traffic flow issue. We really do have a problem. But you're with putting a sign flow. in the, in lieu of it, it's still uh, putting a sign where a landscape is. So you're not driving over the sign. You're not driving over the landscape. So exactly, I'm trying to figure this out here. Why are we asking for this then? The property doesn't have any indication now that the people that are parking in the front need to enter on the north side of the building. So there's no way for traffic to know that that is where you need to enter. So people that even enter on the south side of the building are then that are trying to access the north side of the lot as well as the front of the lot, they're driving in the wrong direction and counterintuitive to the flow of traffic. So it's just with the number of visitors that we've seen increase to the property, it's just become a little bit of a concern and the landlord supports this because his other tenants have expressed concern with there not being any clear flow of traffic for the site. So it's, it's certainly uh, understandable that um, the signage would say our name there and, and that's because we're paying for it for the landlord and he doesn't want to pay for it, but we do think that it's, it's an important thing. All right, anybody else? Commissioner Toussaint. Yeah, I just have a problem that you're not having any landscaping there. I mean, I, I think this is uh, going back to the way we used to be, where we would just have the asphalt everywhere. Sure. It's hot. I'm, personally, I, I think you need to put some plants in there. Sure. I really do. I just think that... I love plants. I, I just tore out a bunch of concrete in the backyard of the house I yeah, bought I love and put plants in a garden. Too, and, and <laughs> I, I just think we need to put some plants in there. I think you can make That's your sign one. smaller and, and then put some plants in there. <laughs> Commissioner Toussaint, you have a motion? Yeah, I'm going to make a motion to go with uh, staff's recommendation to uh, deny VAR uh, 76344. You all heard the motion. Please cast your vote. Yes, vote is for denial. And that motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Vice Chair, that item will move forward to City Council and be heard as a part of their agenda on July 17, 2019. Okay, moving on to item number 22, VAR 76345, applicant owner, SS&D Properties, LLC, 
For possible action on a request for a variance to allow a zero foot setback where five is required and to allow a 320 square foot sign area where 194 square feet is the maximum allowed for propo proposed freestanding sign at 1809 South Las Vegas Boulevard. Board three, staff recommends denial. Can we get the staff report, please? Mr. Chairman, the applicant proposes to erect a freestanding sign adjacent to Las Vegas Boulevard with a zero foot setback where five feet is required. Additionally, the applicant also requests to increase the permitted sign area by 64% to allow a sign area of 320 square feet where 194 square feet is the maximum allowed. While the site is currently de undeveloped, Site Development Plan Review SDR 738 Four, six was approved by the Planning Commission on August 14th, 2018 to allow a proposed restaurant use which will function as an IHOP at the subject site. As the proposed signage is inconsistent with Title 19 development standards and no evidence of a unique or extraordinary circumstance has been presented, staff recommends denial of this project. Please note that additional letters of support and protest have been received since publication. Thank you. Thank you. Can I get your name and address for the record, please? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, John Vornsand, 62 Swan Circle, Henderson, representing the application. Uh, when the current owners uh, purchased the Romo Motel in April of last year, it was already severely damaged uh, by a fire started by vagrants. The owners then had the uh, motel raised and started to work on redevelopment of the property. The owners wanted to provide a new development that would not only uh, foster economic development and growth in this area, but provide a development that the city could point to with pride. The result was an IHOP restaurant. Not your typical IHOP. Uh, this is a 6,300 square foot restaurant that will be the flagship of the uh, IHOP franchise. This is a request for the freestanding sign uh, for the project. As you can see, the site is exceptionally narrow when compared, uh, comp uh, compared to its uh, depth. It's about half the uh, width, or about 150 foot width, by, or 100 foot width, rather, by uh, 300 foot depth. This has created practical difficulties in locating the uh, place for the freestanding sign. The sign is proposed at the same setback and encroachment as the existing Rummel sign. Uh, the proposed sign is smaller at 320 square foot. Uh, the existing Rummel sign is 345 square feet. Uh, the height is slightly higher than the Rummel sign. Uh, this is preferable uh, because of the, uh, it gives actually more clearance uh, in the area of the encroachment. Insofar as the encroachment is concerned, uh, Public Works has indicated they have no objection uh, to that. In fact, as the Public Work Director has stated to us that the proposed placement location will work with our Las Vegas Boulevard project uh, design, of course, this would be, uh, and he also said the sign looked great in his opinion, but this would be also, of course, subject to a license agreement. Uh, the project is being done through the New Market uh, Tax Credit Program, and we're also working with the city's Economic Development Department and partnering with institutions uh, through that program. We're also working with the Neon Museum in the city uh, in preserving the Rummel Motel sign as it is a part of the city's history. Uh, we would respectfully request your approval of this application so that our project can move forward. Uh, we're in agreement with all staff's if approved recommendations and public works recommendations and glad to answer any questions you may have. Well, thank you very much. This is noticed as a public hearing. Anyone from the public like to be heard on this item? Did you want to come up and speak? If, if you can come up to the podium, I'll need your name and address for the record. Hi, my name is Sean Ashuri. I'm the owner of the building at 1809 South Las Vegas Boulevard. And as John was saying, I mean, I bought this property back in April of last year. And when I bought it, I inherited a mandatory notice of demolition that code enforcement put on it. And the reason they put on they put it is because, I mean, vagrants and homelesses occupied this vacant motel and three times lit it on fire and and it was just i mean a disaster there and as soon as i bought it i put 24 hour security i've been cleaning up that place every single day i've had security on there and i mean it's i've been really maintaining that area cleaning graffiti cleaning up trash kicking homeless people out i mean i've 
really done my part, and I really think uh, that this project will be a catalyst for other businesses to come in an area where I think there's a future for it, and hopefully it'll be pedestrian friendly, and this sign is all neon. I mean, it's, what, it's in that area where neon signs are preferred, and I think it's gonna light up the area and really, and really help. Thank you very much, Thank Mr. Ashiri. So you're for it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Anyone else from the public like to be heard? Seeing no one else, I will close the public hearing. Commissioner Quinn. I just want to say it's a it's a beautiful project, and I know when John um, puts his name behind something, he's been around a long time, and mm -hmm. and he knows a good project to represent and one not to. So I'll be supporting your item tonight. Thank you. I, I uh, feel the same way. It is a great project, Commissioner Quinn. Um, regarding item number 22, uh, uh, variance, uh, what is it, VAR 76345, my motion this evening is for approval following all staff's recommendations. Thank you. There's a motion on the floor. Please cast your vote. Please post. And that motion carries. Thank you and very Mr. Much. Chairman, that item is final action this evening unless appealed to the city clerk's office within 10 days. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Moving on to item number 23, SUP 76351. Applicant, I need cash now. I do. <laughs> Owner, Red Feather Property, LLC. For possible action request for a special use permit for proposed 1,730 square foot financial institution, specified use with waivers to allow a 59-foot distance separation from a parcel zone from, for residential use where 200 feet is required and a 660-foot distance separation from another finance institution specified where 1,000 feet is required at 3281 North Decatur Boulevard, Suites 250 and 260, Ward 5, staff recommends the Nile Committee staff report, please. Mr. Chairman, the subject site is located within an existing shopping center and within the C2 General Commercial Zoning District and is subject to Title 1912 development standards. The proposed location of this use fails to comply with the minimum distance separation requirements for the requested special use permit. From the residentially zoned parcel, the proposed 59-foot residential distance separation waiver represents a 70 foot 70 percent reduction from the required 200 foot separation mandated by title 19. the 660 foot distance separation waiver from a similar use represents a 34 percent distance separation reduction from the 1000 feet mandated by title 19. there is also one financial institution specified use within 1000 feet of the subject location and the addition of one more represents an over-concentration of the use in the local area. Therefore, staff recommends denial of the requested special use permit. Please note that additional letters of support and protest have been received since publication. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I get your name and address for the record, please? Uh, good after or good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, Planning Commissioners. My name is Tony Sless, address 1980 Festival Plaza Drive. Here on behalf of the applicant, um, if I may direct your attention to the overhead. You can see uh, the property is located uh, right here in two suites that uh, constitute about 1,700 square feet. It is a large commercial shopping complex located on major arterials of Decatur, Cheyenne, and Rancho. Directly across or kitty corner is the North Las Vegas Airport. Uh, we are in a busy commercial shopping center here. Uh, we did have a, uh, a voluntary proactive uh, neighborhood meeting. That neighborhood meeting was a week ago Monday on June 3rd. Uh, only people in attendance were myself and Ms. Kelly Wood from uh, Councilman Creer's office. Um, so we were able to chat for a little bit, but we st stayed for about 45 minutes and uh, uh, no neighbors uh, did attend. Um, understand staff's position on this, but I think we have a couple of uh, uh, points here that do make it uh, compatible. Uh, first, with respect to the separation to residential, you can see directly to the north we are only about 60 feet from the residential. We have a, uh, a local street that separates us, but this is the back side of the residential, all of the uh, commercial fronts towards uh, Cheyenne and Decatur. Um, it is a large commercial shopping center with a lot of uh, diverse uses in it. Um, it's a heavily trafficked area. This use would not 
not provide any additional traffic or anything like that. As even indicated in the staff report, um, this shopping center apparently is already parking impaired, but our use is, is so minimal and so uh, not impactful that it does not um, require any additional uh, parking spaces. Uh, number two, uh, this is something that uh, actually was recently hashed out at the uh, city council hearing, and that is with respect to measuring distances uh, to commercial shopping or to commercial subdivisions. Um, and I'm not going to get into that argument. I just think it's an interesting point that you can see right here is our site. And then outside this thousand square foot or this thousand foot ring is uh, the other uh, commercial or the other financial institution. So from door to door, it does exceed a thousand uh, feet. Um, also, it, this is on its own a fee simple parcel right here. It is about uh, 1,000 feet. However, the city has uh, taken the position, and, and I'm not here to relitigate that, but just taking the position that it is measured from commercial subdivision to commercial subdivision, which would be right here at the point of Rancho and Cheyenne. That's about 660 feet. So um, kind of a technical nature, but again, it's uh, you know on three major right-of-ways, Decatur, Cheyenne, Rancho, North Las Vegas Airport in this area. So we do think there are some mitigating circumstances with respect to that, and uh, we do believe it's compatible. And with that, I'm more than happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much. This was noticed as a public hearing. Anyone from the public like to be heard in this item? Seeing no one from the public, I'll turn it over to the commission. Commissioner Williams. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you know, I do, uh, I do understand the 60-foot uh, uh, to residential uh, explanation, and, and that, that makes sense. However, you know, the purpose of the uh, distance separation is so like businesses aren't uh, clustered on top of each other. And so, you know, look, looking at this uh, situation in its totality, I have to say I actually agree with the staff recommendation in the report on this one. Okay. Would you like to make a motion, Commissioner? Yes. Or did you want to Commissioner Savio? I just got a, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just got a question for staff, because that, that one's a new one to me. Um, since when do we, we go from property line to property line? I mean, uh, in the past, I, you know, I'm just going to use as an example a short-term rental. If that marker was on top of that house uh, and it was outside that ring, then, you know, it was always, uh, they were good to go, and I'm just trying to figure out now since when are we hearing that it goes from the frontage of the property to the corner of the other property, and now they're not conforming when the ring specifically shows that the other business is outside. I'm just trying to figure that out. Mr. Chairman, if I may, so to use the applicant's words to not relitigate a, an issue that council um, already voted on. So we've, for 25 years, used that as our measurement for distance separation. So I'm not quite sure uh, on the short-term rentals. It was always, if the property line touches the radius circle, then it, it's in the radius. Um, and so for uh, 25 years, that's been the city's mechanism uh, for measuring distance separations. Thank you. I guess if I could jump in, one of the differences in this conversation is that the arrow uh, the property line is still within the circle, right? It's still one parcel. Correct. Is that correct? Okay. Yes, Mr. Chairman, that's correct. So, yet the individual tenant space is outside the circle as indicated. However, the commercial center where they access the property, where they're parking and everything else, that commercial center is all one parcel, and that is within the within the distance separation. Okay. Uh, Commissioner. And if I'm, oh, sorry. If I may, uh, Mr. Chairman, the, the only point I, I was trying to make is that, and again, I'm not, the only point I was trying to make is not only is the, it outside the circle, but the, the actual fee simple parcel ro located right here is uh, just about out th outside the thousand square feet where you could actually buy this particular parcel, not the whole commercial shopping center, is located here. I understand, though, that, that staff has taken the position that it's measured to the entire commercial subdivision, which would be right here. And so that, that was, that was the, the point I was trying to make, and, and why, um, and I understand your, your, uh, your motion, Commissioner, but why we felt that it really isn't uh, oversaturated. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Williams? So I'd like to motion uh, on item SUP 76351, uh, motion to deny. 
Okay, there's a motion on the floor. Please cast your votes. Yes vote is for denial. Please post. And that motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, that item will move forward for City Council consideration as a part of their agenda on July 17th, 2019. Great. Thank you. You guys have a good evening. You too. Thank you. Moving on to item number 24, SDR 76332, applicant hot diggity dog daycare, owner the Tass C. Harden and Lewis C. Harden revocable family trust, Lewis I. Harden revocable trust, family trust, for possible action request for a site development plan review for proposed 10,000 square foot pet boarding facility on the south side of Reg Coach Avenue, west of Rancho, Ward 4, staff recommends approval. Can we get the staff report, please? Mr. Chairman, the applicant is proposing to construct a 10,000 square foot pet boarding facility on an undeveloped lot. The current zoning is C1 limited commercial with an SC service commercial general plan designation. Pet boarding is a conditional land use in the C1 limited commercial zoning district. Per the submitted justification letter, the proposed use meets all conditional use requirements. In addition, the subject site adheres to all required parking and landscaping requirements outlined in Title 19. As the proposed use meets all applicable Title 19 development standards, staff finds the use can be conducted in a harmonious and compatible manner with the existing developments in the area. Therefore, staff recommends approval subject to conditions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I get your name and address? Yes. Um, Mr. Chairman, commissioners, good evening. Richard Gallegos, 6725 Southeastern here on behalf of the applicant. Uh, we do understand and concur with the recommendations. I'd uh, be happy to answer any questions you might have. I do have the rendering you can see on the overhead. Uh, but with that, again, I'll ask, uh, be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. This is notice as a public hearing. Anyone from the public like to be heard in this item? Please. Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing and turn it over to the commission. Commissioner Tucson. <clears throat> Mr. Gallegos, I am very excited about this project. I love my dog, and I love that my dog having a place to play. Um, I haven't been to doggy daycare before, but my daughter brings her dog to doggy daycare all the time. And if there are no further reports or anything from my fellow commissioners, I'd like to make a motion to approve. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. Please cast your votes. Oh, are you moving from your current location or is this a new one? This will be expanding from the current location. Oh, yes. good, because my daughter goes to the other one. Oh, thank God. Yes, and we, <laughs> thank have you. A, we, we do have a space for you. So, so thank so you. my dog, so that's oh, okay. <laughs> do I need to ask a question? Does she, she doesn't know him any money, does she? I don't think so. <laughs> okay, good, okay. You're okay, Michelle. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. Wait, I want to vote on this. Please, please, yeah. So Tallulah and Daisy love going there. <laughs> Please post. And yeah, that motion carries. Thank you. Thank Mr. You. Chairman, that Good item evening, is final action Thank this you. evening unless appealed to the city clerk's office within 10 days. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item number 25, SDR 76350, applicant owner, True Love Missionary Baptist Church for possible action on a request for site development plan review for a proposed parking lot expansion at 1941 H Street, Ward 5, staff recommends denial. Can we get the staff report, please? Mr. Chairman, the subject site is partially developed with an existing church. Currently, there is an approximately 72-foot wide area adjacent to the north perimeter and a 49-foot wide area adjacent to the west perimeter, which remains undeveloped within the existing parking lot area. The applicant has proposed to pave uh, the undeveloped area within the parking lot to mitigate dust control and aid in protecting air quality in the area. Pursuant to an approved building permit and plot plan review, date stamped 0905-1974, the subject site was required to provide a five-foot wide landscape buffer adjacent to the north perimeter of the site and a one-foot wide landscape buffer adjacent to a portion of the east perimeter. Within the north landscape buffer, five gallon oleander shrubs were required to be planted four feet off center. Also, five gallon juniper shrubs were required to be planted three feet off center within the one foot landscape buffer adjacent to H Street. The applicant has requested an ex exception of planting materials to allow no planting materials throughout the subject site. Due to the proposed removal of all required planting materials from the parking lot area, 
Staff has determined that the proposed project is not compatible with the surrounding development in the area and will have a negative impact to the adjacent multifamily residential development to the north and south and single family residential development to the east of the subject site. Therefore, staff recommends denial of this project subject to conditions. Please note that additional letters of support have been received since publication. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you get your name and address for the record, please? Good evening. Haley Shinton, 4310 Cameron Street, Suite 12A. Here on behalf of the applicant, I just want to really quickly state that this, the purpose of this application is really to just mitigate the dust control. Um, gets pretty busy on Sundays and over in the sections of the parking lot that are not paved, it causes, you know, people park over there, causes a lot of dirt and dust to fly up in the air. So. The purpose of this is just to mitigate that. Um, the church does have plans for in the future to add an addition to the existing building once the proper funds are in place, um, at which time all zoning and building code requirements will be met. Um, we respectfully ask for your approval of this item and I'm free to answer any questions. Thank you very much. This is known as a public hearing. Anyone from the public like to be heard? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing. Turn over to Commissioner Commissioner Williams. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, uh, on this uh, item, uh, I understand staff's recommendation for denial. I, I am wondering, though, why ultimately no plant material is a request. So, because of the future plans to add on to the existing building, at which time you know, landscaping and everything would be proposed. Um, all the, if we were required to do any landscaping with this pavement of the parking lot, all of that would get demolished for the new construction that would be taking place for the addition. And what's the timing on the new construction? Uh, I'm not sure about that. I think they have to get the proper funds in place for that, but I'm not, I don't have a time frame. And so the concern would be, uh, you know, not in compliance with the requirements for landscaping under Title 19. But I, I'd really, uh, I'm wondering if, uh, if the business would be willing to, again, meet with staff to talk about our alternatives or possibilities. And I'd even be willing to meet with the business to, to better understand ultimately what they're looking to do on site. Okay. So I'd like to hold this item, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, we can hold it uh, one, one time. So between now and the next meeting, that'd be great. Absolutely. Uh, okay. And I, just to, to kind of um, add on to Commissioner. Mr. Chair, the next meeting or 30 days? 30 days, I think. Oh, okay. is, yeah. Uh, to add on to what Commissioner Williams was saying, I mean, I'm looking at it. I understand, um, you know, it's hard to raise funds and it's hard to get things going quickly. It would have been just nice, even on the sliver to see, on the frontage road, to see something there, you know, just some box hedges, some um, dwarf oleander, something, you know, just to, to kind of come forward. And I understand the requirement is probably to put a lot in the parking lot, and um, but it, it would be nice to see a little something uh, out there. And I think in the end, uh, the applicant would be really happy with what they see. So. But you're okay with withholding it 30 days on, on abeyance as well? Yeah, that's fine. We'll work with Commissioner Williams to cool. come up with a plan. I appreciate that very much. There's a motion. Uh, if you'd like to come up to the microphone, I'll need your name and address for the record. Of course. My name is Scotty Marks. I'm uh, 416 Pinecliff Drive, and I'm representing the owner of the Trula Baptist Church and the pastor. Um, I would like to maybe perhaps discuss some of those concessions right now instead of holding it over 30 days. Um, um, Actually, I'd like to uh, hold this item four to 30 days and we can uh, have a site visit and really discuss uh, big picture looking at the site. Okay. Um, again, we're just looking to, to get this paved so uh, that... Uh, Scotty, we're, yeah. we're going to have a motion now for abeyance for 30 days, so there's nothing more to really talk about it as far as what you want to have on the site. We've heard it from the first time. So uh, going with Mr. Commission, uh, Commissioner Williams' motion for abeyance, uh, can we get a vote, please? And that would be July 9th? Yes. Thank you. So motion on the floor, uh, 30 day abeyance. Please post. 
And that motion carried. And Scotty, just so you know, you'll, you'll have plenty of time to, to work it out and, and be at the site visit and, and convey your message at that point. Sure. Thank you very much. Yep. Okay, uh, moving on to citizens' participation. Public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters within the, ju the jurisdiction of the Planning Commission. No subject may be acted upon by the Planning Commission unless that subject is on the agenda and scheduled for action. If you wish to be heard, come to the podium, give your name for the record. The amount of discussion on any single subject as well as any time any single speaker is allowed may be limited. Would anyone like to be heard during this portion? Seeing no one, I will just quickly say uh, welcome to Commissioner Williams, and we're, we're happy to have you with us on the commission and, and uh, appreciate what you bring to it. So, okay, with that, meeting is adjourned. <laughs>